Hi there guys, Neil Atta Tally Autos here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you also enjoyed the Punto video last week. We're gonna have another update for you this week. This time we're gonna be removing everything else. And I wanna have a little look at that seal just to see how bad it is. So, it's on the ramp. This is gonna be the last time it's on the ramp until it goes back together again. So, what's happened since the last episode? I've removed the sunroof, the headlining, um, some bits of the wiring loom, and other bits of trim which are all inside the body, ready to come off. Still got the dashboard to remove, engine, exhaust, suspension, uh, fuel tank and rear subframe. But first of all, I wanna cut a bit of the sill off on the driver's side, just to see what we're dealing with. Before I take the engine out or mess with any more of the chassis, um, I just wanna see if it's strong enough to be on the ramp. Um, which is worrying me quite a little. Now just by the amount of daylight I can see through there, I am extremely worried about how it is. So I'm just gonna cut a bit off here, just so I can see the inside of the chassis and see how much it needs stiffening. Well, as Sam Beckett would say, oh boy. Um, yeah. Yeah, that whole chassis rail is rotten. Now, I knew it was bad, but I kind of was hoping it wasn't that bad. Basically, that whole chassis rail needs rebuilding. Is that beyond my skills? Never done anything this big before. I mean, I know I can cut parts out and weld bits in, um, but ooh, it's a big job. Okay, let's crack on. And we'll uh, see what it's like when we do the rest of it. Right, subframe is off, let's have a closer look at it now. Not in too bad shape from the look of it, that will clean up nicely from what I can tell. Yeah, it's not bad at all for a 25 year old car. It isn't too bad at all, wishbones are totally uh, cream crackered. Anti-roll bar should clean up okay, I'll get some new bushes to go in there. The engine mount, I have to see if I can get a new one of those, but these three bolts were really tight um, and I didn't think they were gonna come and do so, that's why I've left those in there for now. Um, brake discs, obviously, they're, they're no good at all. The stone plates, I shall have to get some more of those. Hub should clean up okay if I can remove the ABS sensor okay, but it doesn't look like I'll be able to because it has disappeared. Um, hub should technically clean up okay and on this side is exactly the same but we do have some sort of a bolt left there to get it out I 
And now underneath where the subframe was, no holes, which is a good sign after the rest of it. Now brake pipes, this brake pipe I took off and no fluid came out of it at all. So this is beyond uh, repair and I need a new one of those. That's totally blocked. Um, this pipe here started leaking. I had to grind the nut off, not in a very good way. I'm gonna have to weld there now. Um, but this one started leaking when I was messing around up there. But generally the underside of the arch on this side looks fine. And again, from down here, this side looks pretty good too. A little bit of rust coming through here but it doesn't look like it'll need any welding. The actual mounts for the subframe are rust free. Now a few hours later, I've been battling with a few uh, rusty nuts and bolts, but we were ready to drop the engine. Haven't really had many problems, um, other than the fact the driver's side engine mount is seized in sort of several bolts. So I've got it off another way, and hopefully once um, everything's out of the way, I can spend more time um, getting the bolt off. So let's drop the engine and see everything's disconnected. I did forget one thing, throttle cable, done no damage, so I'm just gonna uh, undo that off camera now and then drop the rest of the engine. So technically, that is the hardest part done now. Let's have a look in the engine bay now and uh, see uh, what's going on in there. All right, broken bolt here, we've got a repair, which isn't too bad. Um, a little bit of rust in some small areas around here, but nothing that's gonna create any holes. Um, going underneath, the inner chassis leg is all perfectly fine on this side. There's nothing there which would cause any welding issues. All the front panel here appears to be pretty good. I mean, yeah, we've had a, a mount there or something come away, so we'll just tidy that up and then figure out how to attach that oil cooler mount there properly. I do still need to remove all the wiring loom from here, so I can do this side properly. But other than a little bit of surface rust there, that looks okay too. Um, bulkhead, can't see anything on it yet, but I can't imagine that would be bad because the chassis legs are all okay. Engine itself, let's have a little look at it and see what we can see. Corroded pipe there, but that looks, that's repairable. We did have a blow from a gasket down here, as I've said in another video, and wouldn't surprise me if the manifold was loose because I can spot a few missing nuts and bolts. Or loose, should I say. But yeah, the engine will tidy up. All the belts are desperate to be changed. You can see all the cracking in that one there. But it's all present. It's relatively tidy. We have had an oil leak from the rocker gasket, which has been leaking down here. Gearbox, there is a leak in between the gearbox and the oil. There is a leak between the engine and the gearbox. That's good, probably gonna be the crank seal, which our fingers crossed would be relatively easily to get, get hold of. A few hours later now, I have now removed the rear subframe and the fuel tank. And to my surprise, the fuel tank isn't that bad. It is a metal fuel tank. Uh, I know they are quite prone to rusting. So uh, I'm quite surprised that this one is actually, seems to be okay from the outside anyway. So let's have a look at show you what I've done and where we are. So now on to the rear subframe now. It's not in too bad of a condition for a 25 year old car. That's never been loved. Um, we've still got the brake bias springs on there so they can be hopefully reused it's not too bad in a rust form we can clear that up and make that look nice put some new shockers on it and new brake pipes made up for it and clean everything else up um the rear arms are the worst looking out of a lot of them but they will clear up because they are quite solid bits of kit the rear brakes will be sent off to be refurbished and the same with getting all the rear brake hoses and brake lines changed new rear discs new wheel bearings hopefully the fuel tank is all off, as you can see here. Everything has been removed. I did manage to break the vent, so I'm gonna to have to either repair that or I know that a lot of people do upgrade to the plastic fuel tank, so I may do that. But the fuel tank, it looks okay at the minute. 
but I can see bits of rust on it and it's quite crusty there so um, we don't know uh, how much it's going to be rusting on the inside. So now onto the underneath where this subframe used to be in the fuel tank where you couldn't see but now we can. It's not in too bad a condition at all. Worst bit is this mount here which is where the fuel tank mounted to. The two bolts I had snap on the fuel tank are here but they can be drilled out and replaced quite easily. And the same with this one here. And the rest of the floor pan I might as well show you just to give remind you all of how bad it is. As I say, the entire box section of the subframe, I would say pretty much all the way along the car, needs changing. Uh, the actual floor, the inner floor pan, sort of the inner half of the car, isn't too bad. That will clean up okay. So when it comes to making the front floor pan, it's not going to be too bad at all. And the other side, yeah, this is the worst one by far. As you can see, there's nothing left of that fuel, uh, not fuel rail, but uh, chassis rail all the way along to the back. So, what do you guys think of it? Should I continue saving it? Should I scrap the shell? I am in two minds, um, but I'm gonna have a word with uh, Welder Fabricator, see if he can uh, make me up some chassis rails for it and see whether it's worth salvaging or not, but uh, definitely in two minds with it at the minute. So what have I got left to get off? I've got to get the rest of the fuel hosing off. I've got to pull the brake pipes all the way down to the front of the car. I've got to remove the trans sort of the, the central tunnel with the, the handbrake on and the gear selectors on. Uh, fuel pipes, steering rack, all the gubbins left under the engine bay. And suspension at the front. And then it's on to the dashboard, but mainly I want to get everything off the sort of external side of the chassis um, in this episode so we can then sort of get it on the ground wheel it around and then get the dashboard and the wiring loom out of it and then decide what we're going to do regarding um, getting rid of all this rust Certainly a little bit lighter. So the final hurdle is now in sight. I've just got to strip off the dashboard and the rest of the stuff in the engine bay and we're all good to go. What I have done is I've spoken to my body guy who I've known for nearly 15 years. He's going to come round and have a look at the welding and he's going to hopefully uh, help me, if not do, the, uh, the seal welding for me uh, or fabricate me some panels at least um, so we can get that part done. And I have inquired about getting the vehicle dipped. Uh, it's not cheap. It's going to probably cost me getting on for 1800 quid. So, uh, yeah, it's an expensive job, but it might be worth doing because of all the rust in the hard-to-reach places. It just means it will all be gone and I'll have a fresh pallet to uh, start rebuilding from. So now I'm going to be asking for a little bit of help off the Punto community. I am going to be needing a few sort of hard to find parts. I'll go through a couple of them in a minute, but there's going to be many more over the course of the next few months that I'm going to need. So if any of you guys want to kindly donate anything, you can get yourself a special mention in the video. So let's have a look at these parts that I need now. So what I've noticed this morning is this front slam panel has had a bit of a bump at some point in its life. So what I'm going to need is another slam panel. So if any of you guys out there are breaking one that hasn't had a light front end bump like this one has, um, could you cut that off for me? And um, I would be grateful if you could do that for me. That would be amazing. Another couple of bits I need. I need the exhaust bracket from underneath the car because this one has seen a few curbs and it is rather bent. I also need a gear stick because somebody in the Chavy Youth has decided to cut the top off, so I need to replace that. And one more part I'm going to be needing for the immediate future anyway, I'm sure there's going to be plenty more, is the number plate plinth which goes along there, which uh, holds the number plate lights. So the one I've got had cracked and broke in three places, so I'll be a little bit stuck without one of those when it comes to rebuilding it. So it'd be great if you could uh, source any of those for me, that'd be awesome.
Losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious in panic The infinite vastness Of all that is blackness Right, we're about there with the engine bay now. It's just the loom, the brake servo and things like that, but I've got to take the dashboard out to get the rest of those out. So I'm going to crack on with that and then we're done. So now, all we're left with is some wiring and the heater matrix. That's been a tough three and a half days. I've spent um, a few weekends doing this and a few uh, hours in between uh, doing jobs at work, but we're finally done. So let's have a look around the almost bare shell. So all the interior is now out. There's a few bits of plastic trims and stuff, but I'm gonna do that 
um, before it goes off to be dipped at some point. A few loose nuts and bolts I've got to put away. Oh, we can still see the chassis number there, look. But as you can see, in full a little bit more now. All the damage. Now, I've left the fuel tank in the car because at whatever point it goes to get dipped, I think I'm going to dip the fuel tank as well so we know how bad that is when it comes back. But there is an option for using a plastic tank, I do believe, so I'm sure some of you guys will fill me in on what model it needs to come off in order to uh, get one of those fitted. But it's a shame because it's a new fuel pump in there. Um, I've had a few more holes. You can see there's one down there. Some at the back of the chassis, the back of the boot there, and all the way along there. At least everything sort of from the waistline up is okay, bar that one bit on the other side. And all the engine bay is all pretty much empty. I am struggling with this. These three bolts which hold this in are just turning. So I need to try and get my hands on another tank. Or I need to get some more Dremel wheels and um, Dremel these nuts off because they're just... They're just loose and spinning inside there, so and then I can just use some rivet nuts inside there and just put some threaded bolts through when I refit it. So I'm finally at the point now where everything is off and I can start to do some repair work. I'm unsure on what order everything's going to be done. I'm thinking probably the best thing to do is to get it all welded up first, take it to be dipped, and then it can all be primed and sort of acid etched or whatever it is done this new thing they do when they dip them so it's all sort of as it comes out the factory in modern times so it's not going to rust again um i think that's probably the best way to do it but so i will have a word with my body guy next week and see what he recommends to do but um first thing i've got to do is cut the rest of those sills off and repair those chassis legs that's got to be i think the very first thing i do because the chassis is so weak at the minute so, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed all my hard work in this episode. I have cut through quite a lot of it just so I can get it done without having to worry about moving the camera and, and, and filming it. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to comment below, uh, subscribe and all that sort of normal stuff you do. So, thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.